Hi, welcome back to another video. Today we are doing my June wrap up. This month I think I got through about nine books. I don't know, I didn't actually count them, but let's get right into it. Starting off the month, I read The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I truly thought this book was really good when I started it, and then it just kind of hit this monotonous tone, and then it ended, and I was like, okay. <sighs> All right, it is a dystopian book. It is about a very near future. Women each have their own role. So you have the wives who apparently can't bear children, but they have some power, some decision-making power. Uh, there are like maids, there are teachers who they are there to essentially create handmaids. And the handmaids are the ones who bear children who are there solely for the purpose of carrying a child. This book did have some scenes that were um, disturbing for sure. Some scenes that made me think and I really thought this book was gonna get deeper into that kind of stuff, but it didn't. I did a whole review on this book. I'll link that up um, in the cards, but basically what happened in this book is that uh, all the parts that seemed like they were going to be gripping, they were going to be super interesting, that um, I thought was going to drive the story into a more dynamic sort of pace, uh, were mentioned, and then you moved on to our main character, Offred, who is essentially dealing with her life and how drastically it has changed, because it seems every time she speaks and mentions her past that it was really not that long ago. I gave this book three stars. I don't think it was bad. I just also am not sure that I would ever read it again. I don't even know if I'd really recommend it to anyone, because it wasn't really a fun read. It was more of like a critique on society than anything else. Uh, I know there's a sequel, not sure if I'll read that. If you think I should, if you think that it is better than the prequel, then please let me know. Maybe I'll give it a try. So My Dark Vanessa was the second book that I read this month. It was actually an audiobook. Uh, it took me a while to get through this book, not because I didn't like it, but because this, bo <laughs> this book brought up a lot of emotions. My Dark Vanessa is about a young girl who essentially has a relationship with her high school teacher. I was so impressed with the prose. It was so beautiful. I loved listening to it. I honestly think that, uh, I haven't, I didn't read the physical book, but if you can get your hands on the audiobook, listen to it because it's really, really good. This book just did such a good job with the innocence of a young girl and what it is to be loved for the first time or looked like looked at for the first time and how that can affect anyone really but i feel like especially for young girls in that position where they can easily be um used it was just such a powerful book. I will say that maybe some trigger warnings, not, I wouldn't, hmm. I want to say for sexual abuse, but there is technically no real violent scenes in this book. Still trigger warnings. I mean, this is a relationship between a minor and an adult um, that is justified from the narrator's point of view. Just keep that in mind. I do think it is still a beautiful book. I absolutely loved it. Loved the ending. Absolutely loved the ending. I count on getting the physical copy so I can read it myself. That book I gave five stars. Really, really liked it. Next I read Orlevok. This book I actually got as an ARC, so I didn't really know anything about the author, never read anything by him, but I saw the synopsis for the story and I thought it sounded super interesting. I saw that it seemed to be based on uh, Eskimo Inuit culture, um, that the story was about a young girl who lost her parents and who ends up being addicted to narwhal tusk, which in this story I think narwhal tusk is a source of magic, um, but if you chew on it you can be highly addicted to it and it's just not very good. And so she needs to travel to the end of... I don't know what really what it really is. I don't know if it's really the end of the world. Hi, cat. And at the end of the world, there is this giant ice wall, 
in which everyone who's ever died is frozen into that wall and she needs to go there to find her mother or her father's corpse to retrieve a talisman to be able to be accepted into a clan and the ultimate goal is to seduce a king it sounded super super interesting so when i got the arc i was super excited got right to reading it and then i got through 30 percent of the book and i had to stop now maybe i should have pushed through a little bit more but let me give you some reasons why i did stop the prose of the book was a huge issue for me it every time i read it it felt like the author had swallowed a thesaurus and was just trying to give me the fanciest words you could possibly use but with all those fancy words there was very little description of the setting so yeah that was maybe the biggest thing then there was no characters really all the characters that are introduced all sounded the same to me and our main character right the young girl um she's about eight years old at the beginning of the book and she's addicted to the narwhal tusk and no one seems to really notice and then even when people do notice they don't really do much like they tell her to stop and they try to take it away I will say I think the author did a really good job of representing um, addiction in a person and how hard it is to get off it, but that's the problem is that the book was mostly just about addiction. That's it. And I was just like, okay, what is the plot? What is actually happening here? Because all I'm seeing is a girl that's trying to get a fix. It wasn't for me. If you want to check it out, please feel free to. Uh, it is a self-pub book. Maybe you'll love it. For me, it wasn't my cup of tea. Getting in the ninth, though, by Tamsin Mir Mir? I don't know how to say her name. Um, I really, really like this book. I did a whole vlog for this. I'll link that up in the cards, too. But as I was reading this, I was like, well, lesbian? It's not really mentioned anywhere in particular. Like, yeah, it's pretty obvious that Gideon looks at women in that way. But, like, other than that, not much. Because that's not the center of the story and it's not a huge important part. Uh, necromancers, yes, very much. Very, very much necromancers. Haunted gothic palace in space. Palace in space? Yeah. Gothic? Eh, not so sure about that. The whole story is Gideon is a sort of servant for the ninth house, which I'm not even going to try and explain what the houses were because even I don't know. <laughs> She's a servant for the ninth house and she tries to escape at the beginning of the book. That's not a spoiler. Shit doesn't work. Um, her lady ends up telling Gideon that she will accompany her to this palace in space because there is a sort of summit that's going to happen where other necromancers from the other houses are going to show up and the purpose is for them to try and unlock this super necromancer power. Now everyone arrives at this palace and suddenly people start dying, okay? So it's kind of more of like a murder mystery in space with necromancers. I really love this book because of multiple things. One, the banter, the dialogues, beautiful. Even the descriptions were just so sassy and sarcastic. I just, I loved it. I loved it. The characters were wonderful. The dynamic between Gideon and Harrow, which is her lady, was just... Mm. Uh, the necromancy was interesting, actually. I thought that the, the magic was very intriguing and how it worked and how it could be different for so many of the different characters. So, as I said, uh, I couldn't tell you how the anything about how the houses work or why they're in space or I don't know it's chaos and my confusion kind of um, made me not like this book too much but it also made me like the book because Gideon herself is not entirely sure how anything works right so you're with Gideon just following Gideon and personally I felt like I was in this book if I was a character in this book I would have just been like um the squire with like a backpack just walking behind Gideon just being like I have no fucking idea what we're doing and Gideon would just be like yeah me neither like that's how I felt reading this book the only reason I didn't give this book a full five stars is because of one by confusion and because there's just one 
particular scene that lasts for a very long time and also it just made me unhappy. Not because I think it was bad. In fact, I think it was very good. I think that, like, I've justified it. It makes sense why it lasted so long. It makes sense why what happened happened, but I still hated it. <laughs> I hate it. I justify it, but I hate it. So, yeah, this book got a 4.5 stars from me. I still think it's really good. I will say, if you don't like being confused while you're reading a book, don't read this book. It's not for you. Every month, I have a book club book that I read with my local library. This month was Big Lies in a Small Town by Diane Chamberlain. This book was good, but overall, kind of like a book that I'm not really going to remember that I read. The story is basically about a girl who if, was serving time for an accident that she was involved in. Um, she is given an opportunity to use her artistic talents to fix a mural. And as she is fixing the mural, she's kind of figuring out her own life. And she's also interested in why the mural looks the way it does, because the mural is full of some pretty interesting things. I kind of don't want to spoil that because I feel like it's one of the interesting parts about the book to discover. Anyways, uh, the second character is a character that lived in 1940 and she was a painter, the painter who painted the mural. So there's the connection between the two characters. Now she is from like New Jersey and she's going down to this town of North Carolina to paint a mural and in this town she is not very well received. So she, like the whole bunch of different things kind of evolve from what she does and what she thinks and what ends up happening to her. It's more of a historical fiction uh, with some intrigue in it, but it's not like a big mystery or anything like that. Still, I feel like some elements in the book need to not be said because in general this book was kind of... I don't want to be mean, but kind of boring. Overall, I gave this book like three stars. It was good, but it wasn't phenomenal. My mom has been wanting me to read this book for like three years. I finally got to it. It's a nonfiction book. So this is my first nonfiction book of the year. Of years, actually. I don't think I've read nonfiction books in a very long time. My mom sold this book to me as the story of a young girl who's raised by parents who are basically not very good at parenting. They're not bad parents. They still love their children, but they're not very good at the parenting aspect. And so this girl um, survives with her siblings. There's a connection between her siblings, really. And it's just their life, really, and how she grew up. Jeanette Walls um, was raised by an alcoholic father, a mother who was kind of always her head in the clouds. I kind of associated her personality with a little sociopathic. She doesn't have a lot of, I wouldn't say emotions, but empathy. Like, she has a very hard time empathizing with her children. Um, she's also denying their situation and how bad it is. At the beginning, you have the child innocence, the we're going on an adventure, right? Because her parents were so eccentric. And it was adventures, especially as a child when you're moving across the country all the time and your dad is saying that he's going to find gold and things like that. But then as she gets older, she starts realizing the flaws in her parents and the how much they're struggling and how bad it's getting and just overall such a beautiful book very emotional there were times when i really questioned how she would get out of this situation but she did she made it on top and it's fascinating it's truly a wonderful book it's super easy to read i think it's like 288 pages yep 288 pages not hard to read, very quick, and I mean, you stay interested in it all the time. I found myself sitting down and trying to read this book any chance I got. Uh, I also read All Systems Read by Martha Wells. If you don't know, um, All Systems Read is the first book in the Murderbot series, which follows a robot. And I really can't say more because I feel like if I say more, it's just gonna give away too much. But you're following a robot who is, um, in the first book, is accompanying a team out onto a planet. They're more of like an expedition, a research team. 
and this murder bot really doesn't care about them. Just this murder bot just wants to watch shows on its whatever system it has in its head. Um, but things happen, and uh, they realize that another team on the planet uh, is gone, and just just things happen. The humor in this book, the sarcasm, the characters, the setting. It's such a short book, and yet it did all of that perfectly. I loved it so much, and when I finished it, I read the book in like two hours total. When I closed it, I was like, I want more. I loved it. If you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend it, especially if you like sci-fi. I don't like sci-fi. That's the thing too. I'm not a huge fan of sci-fi, especially when people tell me that they're like aliens and robots. I'm just like, Ugh. I'm usually not gonna like that. But this book is just so well done because it doesn't focus so much on like the mechanics and the sciency stuff. It just focuses on what's happening. And I thought that was wonderful. And the character, oh my gosh, Murderbot is wonderful. So I will be picking up the next books and I don't think it'll take me too long to get through them. Um, yeah, I get this one was a five star, no question about it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. Oh, oh, I also I completely forgot about this one. I also listened to the audiobook of um, The Rules of Magic. I forgot who the author is. Um, I got this audiobook mainly because it was available and I was like, I just want an audiobook. And I had heard that like it was a book about magical realism, witches, things like that. I was like, oh, I love that stuff. I really didn't like this book. <laughs> I really didn't like it. Um, I listened to the whole audiobook. I probably should have stopped. It had no story. I guess that's the way I'll put it. It had no story. It's basically these three kids who... I, their mom was a witch but never told them that she was a witch. I guess she tried to deny that part of her life. And then she tells her kids never to do certain things that I guess will reveal that they are witches, but they end up learning about it anyways. And nothing's really explained. It says that they have the sight, which to me means like they get visions, but the sight really apparently is anything at all, which I thought was very confusing. The relationship between the siblings seemed kind of void, like they were supposed to be very close to each other and, and I don't know, I guess have this camaraderie, but I did not feel it at all. Um, the love stories that they had, I guess they were supposed to be so epic that it took away their powers, but I felt nothing. I felt nothing throughout this whole book. There seemed to be no plot, no story. The characters were uninteresting to me, except for like two. Like I was interested in Vincent and in their cousin. I, I forgot her name, but that was really it. Like they're it felt like there was just blips of information being thrown at my face and almost like being told like, hey, put put that together, put that into a story. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> so yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of um, that book. Last book, Vengeful. I finished this one actually yesterday. <laughs> I had picked this book for my tarot TBR game for June as a, I think it was like a sci-fi book that I had low expectations for. I did have very low expectations for it because I loved Vicious. I absolutely loved the first book and I was so scared that this book was going to be, I don't want to do spoilers, but I, I thought it was going to be about a specific someone from the first book trying to get revenge for something. Yeah, I think that's good enough. <laughs> but it wasn't! I'm so glad that it wasn't! It actually introduced- this book actually introduced new characters that were fascinating. I loved Marcella. Her character, super interesting. June is a mystery and I like it. I am there for it. I don't know how else to put this. I heard that this book was not as well received as Vicious, that a lot of people didn't even want to read this book after, after Vicious. I think it is a shame for anyone to not read this book because it has the same elements as Vicious. Fast-paced, really interesting characters, 
shit happening all the time, this kind of time constraint thing, this is just buildup of suspense. But in this one, unlike in the first book, you don't really know what's going to happen. And because my pr my assumptions for um, the first book, from the first book, about what the second book would be about were totally wrong, I'm wondering if I might be right about the third book, about what it'll be, but I also might be completely wrong. I don't know. I love this book though. I am a huge fan of the villains books and I want the third one so bad. V Schwab, please. <laughs> Please get on it. I love these books. I love the pace. I love the characters. I also, like, I know that there are moments in this book that some people probably uh, really didn't like. Uh, like, how did Eon come to be? Uh, that one I really didn't care about because how many Marvel movies have I seen where some big corporation pops out of nowhere? Um, and also, you know, why... Why was June so interested in Sydney, right? Or how did June appear? And that's why I think the third book is going to be mostly about June. Um, but I don't know. I love this book. I gave it five stars. I'm going to give it five stars. I just, uh, I could read this one again. So that is it for my June wrap up. My dog's looking at me like she really wants to go out. So that is it for my June wrap up. Um, if if you've read any of these books, feel free to comment what you thought about them. Hi, you can come say hi. Feel free to comment what you thought about them. Um, or if you want to ask me some questions about other things, like if you want to talk about something else, that's totally fine. Feel free to comment. Um, other than that, if you did like this video, feel free to, please don't lick me with your skunk mouth. <laughs> Please feel free to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and yeah, I will see y'all next time. Bye!